So we've learned quite a bit about rigging on this DVD already, but there are a few things you need to do to set up a rig to be used in a larger production. We're going to use Mr. Biped as our example for this. Blender has a system that allows you to reference assets in other files. So for example, if you have a model of a tree in another file, you can tell Blender to bring it into the current scene. But instead of actually copying it, it just references it. If the tree model in the other file is changed, those changes automatically show up in the current file as well. This system is called Blender's Library Linking System, and it is extremely useful in larger productions, where you often want to be able to make changes to an asset in one place, and have those changes show up in all of the scenes that that asset is used in. I'm not going to go in depth into how the library linking system works, but I do want to cover how to set up your rig to be used with it. In particular, we want to put everything related to the character and the rig in a single group, so that the group can all be linked in as one item. To do that, toggle on all the layers, select all of the objects relevant to the character and the rig. That includes the widget shapes, the armature, the model, and really, well, just everything that has to do with the character. In this case, that is literally every object in the scene. Now to add them to a group, press Ctrl G, or you can select Create New Group from the menu. Now if we go to the object properties with any of these objects selected, we can see that there is now a group in the Groups panel. Let's name the group to something more appropriate, such as Mr. Biped. Now you may notice that there are some layer buttons down here. These determine which objects will be visible in the group when it's linked into another scene. So for example, if I toggle off the last layer, then the widget objects will not be visible because they all exist on that layer. They will still be linked in, so the rig can still use them, but they won't be directly visible themselves. In this case, we want to toggle off all of the layers other than the model itself. Notice that the armature is on a separate layer from the model. This is on purpose. We don't want the armature to be visible in the linked group. We'll see why in a moment. Before we leave this file, though, there is one weird little task we have to take care of. If you go to the armature properties, you'll see that in addition to the armature layers, there's something called protected layers. You're probably wondering what on earth this is for, and your confusion is understandable. It's an artifact of how character linking is dealt with in Blender at the moment. The protected layers settings on an armature don't affect the armature at all in the file it originally exists in. It only affects the armature in the files that it's linked into. In fact, it's even more specific than that. It only affects armatures that have been made proxy in another file, which I'll explain later. But suffice it to say, it's silly and esoteric and one of Blender's biggest warts and will hopefully be going away soon, and I don't think it's worth understanding. All you need to know is that you should toggle it on for any layers that don't have control bones on them, and leave it off for layers that do have control bones. And once you've started using the rig in other files, don't modify the bones in the unprotected layers. It's weird, I know. Let's save this now and create a new file. To link the group in, we can select Link from the File menu and navigate to our rig file. The really cool thing now is that we can actually navigate into our rig file, as if it were a folder. Navigate into the group directory and select Mr. Biped. This is our Mr. Biped group that we just created. Now link it in by clicking link slash append. Hey, look at that! It's Mr. Biped. In fact, it's the Mr. Biped group represented by a single object. We can select it and move it around, and everything in the group moves with it. Of course, since we only allowed the character model to be visible, it looks like we're just moving the model around. But everything else is in there too, it's just not visible. To be able to access the rig, we need to, quote, make it proxy. To do that, make sure the group is selected, and select make proxy from the object menu. A searchable list pops up, which lists all of the objects in the group. We want to select the rig, so search for rig, and select it. Whoa, now we have a visible rig. And this is also the reason why we did not make the rig visible in the original file. Because if it were visible, then we would see two rigs right now. And that's because Blender actually makes a duplicate of that original rig, which is what we see here. 
and hooks everything up to it to work. We can now pose and animate this rig. Whee! And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching.